uh, aircraft, uh, the engine spool up, and that it remains safe. All right, is that always uh, beneficial? Um, no, not always. Um, would it have been beneficial in some of the videos I'm going to show you now? Uh, perhaps, uh, although um, air crashes are always very complicated and they're not never related to one single thing. But what we see here, uh, when we look at Asiana Flight uh, 214, um, we see um, a flight um, to San Francisco where ultimately the aircraft hits the uh, the seawall just before uh, landing. Initially, um, as you and I will transition to the video, as you can see, the the aircraft is in a configuration where it is above its glide slope, and the pilots decide to uh, reduce speed, reduce altitude uh, quickly to get back on the glide slope and land safely. Now, what happens is that uh, because it's uh, too high, it is very difficult to descend and reduce speed. So the pilots change the config configuration of the aircraft uh, such that um, it starts to drop and enter that glide path. What they didn't expect to happen was that by changing the configuration, the throttles would be, uh, the auto throttle uh, would be set into hold mode and that the throttle would not automatically uh, ensure airspeed. What happened was that the airspeed dropped below uh, the safe level, the aircraft dropped below its glide path and it was unable to recover from the, um, from the low speed and um, uh, well reasonably high rate of descent and ultimately hit the sea wall. And I'll show you a bit of that video. The pilot flying switched the autopilot to flight level change mode, which did not help with the descent and resulted in the airplane initiating a climb to the 3,000 foot altitude that was previously set. To prevent the climb, the pilot disconnected the autopilot and retarded the thrust levers to idle. This resulted in the autothrottle transitioning to hold mode. In hold mode, the autothrottle does not control airspeed. Descent rate increased to about 1,500 feet per minute and the observer pilot noted sink rate. About 1.4 miles from the runway, the airplane descended through the desired glide path and slowed through the target approach speed. The pitch attitude steadily increased as the pilot pulled back on the column in an effort to maintain the glide path. The airplane was well below glide path and airspeed was 15 knots below the desired approach speed and rapidly dropping. All right, and I'll stop it here. You can see the uh, position approach path indicators turning to four red, indicating that they are way too low. But what the pilots didn't realize is that uh, in the configuration they were in, the uh, throttles would not control airspeed. You can see them pulling back on the stick and, and well, ultimately uh, going dangerously towards a, a stall situation. They, they were not able to arrest the descent and, and hit the seawall. And the question is, as well, we, um, we're looking at a Boeing plane here with a limited amount of automation. And um, Airbus's philosophy would have uh, ensured that the um, plane would have stayed within the uh, protective envelope. And the question for me is not now, uh, would this uh, accident have happened uh, not have happened in an Airbus plane is but if we look at different forms of control uh, the effect it has on the relation between the pilot and the aircraft changes completely. Now um, we uh, this is not uh, the, the only accident where um, auto throttle problems uh, uh, arose but if we compare it to uh, another video um, and this is the uh, is, is Air France uh, flight 296, which is demonstrating uh, demonstrator flight where the um, pilot shows that the aircraft can be completely controlled by the computer, but something goes wrong. Well, initially, the flyby was supposed to be at 100 feet above the, uh, the runway. Uh, due to circumstances, the pilot was only 30 feet above the runway 
and it approached a wooded area. Now, the um, configuration of the plane was that um, if you're going low, if you're going slow, uh, it is very dangerous to just pull back on the stick. Uh, well, pull back on the side stick, I guess, um, and climb out because the plane might stall. But in this case, the plane did not know that there was a wooded area coming, and so it ended up, well, I'll show you the video. So much so that the aircraft manufacturer's approach is to design the pilot out of the cockpit. This, the first fully automated plane, was flown by a computer. And I'll, I'll stop it here because I, I think this illustrates the point is that um, although this was mostly attributed to pilot error for flying so low, um, there was a battle between the computer and the pilots where the computer in the Airbus ultimately won and the pilot wasn't able to uh, climb out and even maybe an approaching stall would have been better than the result shown here. All right, so um, in another um, uh, video is that um, if we look at the Airbus configuration is there is only a side stick. There is no force feedback and the two side sticks are not coupled. So if you're not paying attention due to some form of heavy workload or some kind of uh, adverse event, it is very hard for the other pilot to notice what the, uh, what the, the pilot in the other seat is doing. And if we look at uh, Air France flight, uh, which was it, 447, and um, where the aircraft flew through a storm, they lost autopilot and they lost speed indicators and they weren't aware of what the plane was doing. The two pilots were confused and what uh, ultimately ended up happening was that one inadvertently pulled back on the side stick. Now, the other pilot was not aware of this and it took a third pilot to enter the cockpit and to realize what was happening and by that time the plane was, uh, it was unable to recover from uh, its well, it's descent, it's stall in, in essence. So I will um, I will play you that video, well, a piece of this video. And... ...were all that was left of Air France Flight 447. Hang on. Let's go back to the right side. to still fly the airplane under those conditions. Challenging, but manageable. Yes. Although they lost the autopilot and speed indicators, they were flying normally and safely. But then suddenly, and without Robert knowing, Bonin does something almost inexplicable. He pulls back on his side stick and raises the nose of the plane. That causes the aircraft to fall and the stall warning sounds. That's, that's the stall alarm. Stall alarm. Over the next four and a half minutes, the stall warning will sound 75 times. Okay, and. What is very important here is, is that the speed indicators for both pilots were all over the place, so it wasn't clear for the pilots what exactly was happening. The main thing here is, is that the, uh, the pilot flying simply pulled back on a side stick and that movement is incredibly small. If you look at the Boeing plane, you have the steering column. If you pull back full on the steering column, the other pilot knows immediately what's happening because the control column will be in his or her lap. Now, so we have two different, um, the two different uh, well, um, automation theor uh, theories, one Boeing and one Airbus. And you see here that, um, that the, the way that the aircraft was designed made it very difficult for the other pilot to see what control inputs were given. And in fact, it is completely possible for one pilot to pull full back on the side stick and one to go full forward in the side stick and the computer will simply average the two responses, which might not uh, be a very um, uh, safe input uh, in this particular situation. Keep in mind, the autopilot was off, they were in a massive ice storm, but you do see that the differences in um, approach to automation may have changed the outcome here with the emphasis on May.